first three phenomena alike that we will discuss are reflection, refraction, and dispersion. These were all covered with Isaac Newton's optics, where he said light is made up of a tiny particle called corpuscles. It's reflected by some surfaces, and the angle of return equals the angle of incidence. Light can also be refracted, which is just a fancy word for bent, as it passes from one medium to another. White light can be separated by a prism into many colors, but each specific color cannot be separated. All of these properties are explained nicely by the particle theory of light. Reflection, of course, is something we're all very familiar with. For example, if you see the Matterhorn here, you can see it directly, or you can see it reflected in the lake below. Mathematically, the way we say that, we have light originating from point P, for example, from the sun or from the object, from the mountain. It hits a reflective surface, bounces off, and this is a pretty key line here. Whenever you do optics, you talk about the normal. The normal is a line that is perpendicular to the surface over which you're reflecting off of. Theta initial is the angle of the incident light, or theta incident, and theta r is the reflected light, and they are both measured to the normal. And the reflected light angle is exactly equal to the incident light angle. Refraction is another common phenomenon which is a little trickier to explain than reflection. It occurs when light transits from one media to another. For example, air to water, water to air, air to glass. What happens is the light bends. So we take this first glass here, there's nothing in it but air, and we have a paintbrush here, and you can clearly see it there. Now we fill the glass with water, half full, we stick the paintbrush in again, and we can see this is the part right here that is underneath the water, and we're going to superimpose these two pictures, and you can see this is what the paintbrush looks like without water, and you can see it bending here with the water in it. This is why if you see a fish in the water and you try and grab it, it's never quite where you think it is. That phenomenon is called refraction. Here's the math behind refraction and also reflected to a degree. Here comes an incident ray over here. You've got air and then you've got water. So a lake, a river, a bathtub. The incident ray comes here. Again, here's our normal line. This is the incident angle. All angles are measured to the normal. Some light is reflected, not very much. Typically we're talking about 4%. Most of the light goes through, but you can see it bending here. That's called the refracted ray. And you would measure the angle of refraction right here to the normal. Now, the, how much it bends is, de is determined by the index of refraction, which we will label N, and we'll talk about that next. You can also have light go any other way. For example, if you're under the water here and you shine a flashlight, now this is the incident ray, this would be the refracted ray, and again, all angles are measured to the normal. The index of refraction n is a measure of how the speed and the wavelength of light changes when it passes from one medium to another. It's very important that this is taken note of right here. The frequency of the light wave, whether it's in air, water, or any media, stays exactly the same. Again, frequency is how many cycles per second go by, so that has to stay constant because if it didn't, you would have all the waves piling up at the interface. For example, if the frequency was greater coming in and into a certain medium, then it was less once it crossed it, then you'd have the waves wouldn't have anywhere to go, so they'd back up. And we know that that just doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in real life. So the definition of the index of refraction it's the speed of light in a vacuum. The speed of light is typically always shown as C, and that's roughly 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and the velocity of light in the medium, and that's V. We're going to do a little math now to come up with another, another uh, equation for the index of refraction. We know that the frequency of any wave, so a light wave also, F is a ratio of its speed to its wavelength. So for light, we have the frequency of light is C over lambda. Now, if I take a medium where the speed of light is V1 and its wavelength is lambda 1, well, I have the frequency is V1 over lambda 1, and we know that these two frequencies are the same. 
because the frequency of light does not change as it transfers from one medium to another. We took those two equations from the previous slide, divided them by each other, and realizing that the frequency stays constant, we come up with C divided by V1 is lambda over lambda 1, where lambda 1 and V1, that's the wavelength and velocity of light in this new media, and C and lambda is the velocity of light and the wavelength of light in a vacuum. We've already defined the index of refraction as C over V1, so we have this other equation now for the index, index of refraction of a material. It's equal to the wavelength of light in a vacuum divided by the wavelength of light in that material. Here are some sample indices of refraction. As n increases, the speed of light in that medium decreases and the wavelength of light will increase. The index of refraction also depends to some degree on the wavelength of the incident light. We'll see later how that will contribute to the separation of colors in a prism. So we have here in a vacuum, we just define the index of refraction as 1.0000. Air is close enough for any calculations we use to just call n is equal to 1, water 1.33, and then uh, several other substances. Crown glass right here. That's the glass they use in people's eyeglasses.